To me, New York means ultimate freedom. We can develop whatever we want, take as much time for that as we need. We work with geeky concepts, super rare hardware, and we never stop until it's really, really good. There's just no one around stopping us and being unconventional or even esoteric from time to time. But the best thing about Neod is that it means working with good old friends exclusively. It's really fun working with these guys because everyone gets to do what they are good at. My name is Dominic and I'm the founder and owner of Neod. I come up with the concepts for our plugins and then manage the projects so that all the great ideas can find their way from paper into your computers. I'm also the visual guy here, so I'm responsible for all photography, for the user interfaces and for website design. Last but not least, I consider myself as the glue in between the analog and the digital realms. So Roger on the one side and Raimund on the other. I'm Raymond and my job is to convert analog circuitry into the digital domain. Ich bin Roger und ich bin der analoge Teil von Neold. The core idea of Neold was born when the three of us were working on Phil's Cascade. And that project was so much fun and so successful that we decided to just carry on with it. However, Neold is not your typical company. I rather see us as a brand or a label driven by three people usually working in different jobs. We're a little bit like Ocean's Eleven. A meeting again after a certain time for a new project, then magically pulling it off somehow, and at the end departing again from the Bellagio Fountain until the next plugin pops up. There are basically three ways how we find our ideas for our plugins. The first is that we would find rare pieces of vintage hardware we have been looking for or which are coming to us by chance, restoring them and uh, then modeling them. One of those cases is the U17 compressor. In other cases, I would have a certain sound inside my head and then create a concept for a plugin around this, like for example with Warble. And the third case is, and that's maybe a little bit weird, but it's like that we would find a certain component. And this component would do something with our brain. We would think about it all the time. We would start dreaming about it until it becomes a concept for a plugin. Und nun erzähle ich was aus dem Nähkästchen. Die Art und Weise, wie wir vorgehen und entwickeln, setzt sich von dem, was ihr kennt, völlig ab. Wir gehen ganz andere Wege. Wir sind komplett frei in unserer Entscheidung. Uns ist auch egal, was wir machen, wir müssen nur begeistert sein von Bauelementen, von Ideen, von Schaltungskonzepten. With the modeling stuff, with the vintage equipment actually, that is often driven by what we can get. Because this stuff is really super rare, very hard to get, very expensive and almost never working properly. And then with the prototyping stuff we do, it's really weird. For example, this whole project was inspired exclusively, basically, by, by how fascinated I was with that specific tube. Only by the fact that it was there. The product that, that was way later, it was this, and then all the rest. The process of Entwicklung is for me like a puzzle. Ich fange irgendwo an mit einem kleinen Steinchen, alles drumherum entsteht wie eine Wolke. Das kann drei Tage dauern oder auch drei Jahre. Keiner weiß es. Und nachdem wir das Bauelement gefunden haben, was uns so begeistert hat, müssen wir drumherum natürlich etwas machen. Eine Schaltung, eine Idee, es muss ja was rauskommen. Und bei uns funktioniert das so, wir bauen irgendwas auf. Wenn es nur eine Röhre ist, legen wir auf den Tisch und im Laufe der Zeit entsteht aus dieser Röhre ein komplexes System. Ich mache Experimente mit Schaltungsdetails. Und nach und nach wächst so ein Produkt zusammen. Our first project was the V76 U73. All three of us are very much in love with old German audio broadcasting technology. Uh, the engineers in that period were as experienced as they were ingenious. And budget wasn't much of an issue then. 
the result, the best of the best. And two of the most iconic products of that time were the V76, which many consider still today as uh, the king of preamps, and the U73 as the German Fairchild compressor. And that's such a killer combo for a plugin that we just had to do it. The trick here was to translate and lift these old timers into modern DAW environments. So not only the sound, but also all the gain staging and the workflow had to be excellent. The first project we did, the V76U73, it has many challenges in there. And one of them would be the feedback structure of the preamplifier and also the filters. And we really worked hard to make sure that this is just spot on. Another one would be the U2A where there's an opto cell and whenever opto is involved, it gets tricky. And we tried many approaches, but eventually we nailed it. These first two projects I've mentioned, Phil's Cascade and the V76U73, have paved the way for what Neil is today. And that's basically two main things. The first is that based on our passion for vintage analog topologies, we like to breathe exciting new life into classic analog masterpieces. And then the other part, and for me that's really the coolest thing, is we built unique analog prototypes from very rare new old stock components. And these exclusive one-offs are then modeled to become exciting, creative plugins for your door. Wenn wir dann schon so ein altes Bauteil gefunden haben, was wir irgendwo erstanden haben, aus irgendwelchen Quellen, wer auch immer, kommt dann zu mir, wir sprechen darüber und ich beschäftige mich damit. Was er daraus wird, weiß keiner, ich auch noch nicht. Ich muss erst mal gucken, was kann das Bauelement, was kann man damit machen. Dann entwickelt sich so eine gewisse Fantasie, das Ding bekommt eine Eigendynamik und wir untereinander sprechen relativ selten. Wir picken uns nur einfach ganz kurz an, geben uns kleine Ideen und ich verkrieche mich wieder in mein Labor und bin Tage beschäftigt. Before even starting, you have to analyze the circuit very deeply and really understand what's going on. What keeps me excited is that converting Roger's circuits into the digital domain is always a challenge because he comes up with those unconventional concepts and you'll need to find new approaches. Das Schöne an diesem Projekt ist, dass ich machen kann, was ich will. Keiner gibt mir vor, wie viel Zeit ich verwende, wie viel Röhren ich kaputt machen darf und, und, und. Und ich kann einfach entwickeln alles das, was mir einfällt. Und ich weiß auf der anderen Seite, dass Raimund ein so genialer Entwickler ist und Umsetzer ist, der die Analogtechnik auch sehr gut versteht. Modeling analog audio hardware typically involves the state space representation where there is a state vector, for instance, capacitor voltages in a circuit and a set of system equations. So given an input sample and a system state, you have to find the output sample. And uh, when you're dealing with nonlinear circuits and feedback topologies, you typically have to solve these using something like the Newton-Russell method, where a solution has to be found. So it's not like you plug in an input sample and the state and there is your output sample. You have to find the output sample. And that, of course, imposes a huge burden on the CPU. So you'll need to find simplifications and approximations. And that's always a challenge for every new project we do. And we take pride in really making sure that the essence and the, the vibe of a particular unit is captured in the digital world. My favorite product from the portfolio so far, it just has to be Wunderlich or Wunderlich. It's the project I've worked the hardest on so far, spent the most thinking on, spent the most hours on, drove abroad to buy stuff, sourced components from all over the world, implemented the most uh, user interface tweaks, made the most video calls and so on. And since the earliest prototype was born more than three years ago, it's also the longest project I've ever worked on in my whole life. More than a thousand days. And this was so worth it. 
So schön das auch klang, es war wunderlich, weil diese Röhre war zu nichts zu gebrauchen. Die war nicht für Auto gebaut. Was machen wir denn da? Also war ich sehr, sehr, sehr beschäftigt mit der Entwicklung dieser Röhre. Selbst die Kennlinie musste ich selber erzeugen, musste ein Messgerät bauen, um die Kennlinie der Röhre aufzuziehen, weil keine Handbücher zu bekommen waren. Die Röhre stammt aus den 30er Jahren. Aber durch drei, vier Versuche mit Prototyping und über einen ganz, ganz langen Zeitraum mit ganz vielen Schweißperlen hat es dann doch geklappt. To me, Wunderlich is the epitome of what NEOL stands for. And that's true analog vibes and vintage mojo coupled with masterful digital implementation and inspiring ease of use. So what's next for NEOL? Oh, there are so many things we still want to do. We have a huge and ever-growing collection of uh, vintage analog gear we want to model. And when it comes to prototyping, we have a very interesting concept for a multi-stage tube separator based on these old German steel tubes you might know from the U47 microphone. We have this fully weirdo concept for a completely new gain reduction cell topology, which has never been done like this before. Bottom line is, you can expect many great things from NEOLD in the future. So please stay tuned.